Hi everyone, it's Kim from Affordably Crafty, and I'm going to be talking to you today about Yarn, the movie that came out in 2016. This is going to be my review video. If you want to see me watching it live and having lots of fun reactions and comments, feel free to join my memberships. The join button is down below. Um, I screen Yarny Movies a couple times a month, and we have our members only lives on Tuesdays at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, that being said, Yarn came out in 2016. It is filmed by a team from Iceland. Um, there are four yarn artists featured in this movie. Let me just go over to my notes here. Um, I'm going to insert here, here a picture of the movie poster. And it's nice because, well, first off a warning. If you wanna crochet and not look at the movie, you're gonna have an issue because two of the artists are, um, well, one artist is speaking in, I'm assuming Icelandic, and it is got the English captions. And then a couple other artists have very strong accents um, and they are, they have captioning, but you may be able to understand them. And then the third one also is speaking in a different language. I'm not sure if it's Belgian or what it is, but they're closed captioned. So if you just want to crochet with your head down, not recommended. But if you are looking at it, I mean, or if you're going to crochet with your eyes up, it's pretty awesome. Um, it is only an hour and 19 minutes long, so it's not a super long watch. Um, but they start off with beautiful pictures of sheep wandering the fields of eternal breakfast in Iceland, and they are so pretty. Um, we start out with Tina, T-I-N-N-A, -N -N who you may know more from discussions of, from the Yarn Geek Ginger about her mosaic crochet. But this is focusing on her as a yarn bomber in, I'm assuming, 2015 or 2016. So I'm not sure if that's before she started doing mosaic. Those who know more about her, comment below and let me know. Um, but it starts off with her, them showing us all the beautiful sheep, I'll insert a picture here, that she is purchasing because she would like to have more diversity of natural wool colors because did you know that people pay more for white or light natural colored wool than other shades? And so she is trying to bring more, more diversity to that. Um, there's a really cool picture of them yarn bombing a photo of a city, which I'll insert here, which is super amazing. And I kind of want to figure out how to do that. Um, and then they show Tina's studio picture here. And I like how real it is, how she has just stuff everywhere. And like within her reach is a fridge. <laughs> like I am not getting off this couch for my crochet project for a while. <laughs> I love that. Then we go to Oleg, who's originally from Poland, and I'm going to link down below the page that tells you more about all four of these artists from the movie page. Um, one of the opening things they show her doing is yarn bombing an actual train, which is pretty cool in this awesome neon color palette, which made me think of um, Pink Sheep Designs crochet aesthetic. Um, I'll link her channel down below. She uses lots of bright colors in her work and tends to work in um, bulkier yarn. She also has a really cool crochet outfit Olick does at here. I'll show you a picture of it. It reminds me of something maybe Madonna would wear, but I really like the layering of the outfit that they that she does. So she does a more of a tight woven fabric on the bottom, and then she puts motifs on top of that, which I really think is cool looking. Um, then we go to Tilde, T-I-L-D-E, um, who is working with Circus Sicker. Sorry if I'm really struggling with that. Um, I'll insert a picture here. Um, there's crochet and knit that you can see in this picture. And she is choosing to use a white color palette, which I think is awesome because it helps the textures and shapes to really stand out because your eye is not drawn to the color. It's drawn to the textures and shapes. Um, and the circus performers interact with the set, which I think is cool. Um, they are literally working on ropes and string and stuff, and it's pretty cool. 
Um, they also kind of remind me of the traditional circus arts, kind of a la Cirque du Soleil, just because they're using, it's not really mechanical and it's not using like, um, there's no animals being harmed or any of that stuff. And then some of the performers talk about yarn being a metaphor for life. And then we're going to go to Tashiko, who some of you may be familiar with if you watch Yarniversity. I will link the episode she's in down below if you want to check that out. That is Reggie J. Hook Crochet's channel. Um, she does interactive crochet that kids interact with. And she started doing it um, in 1971 to 1973. So she's been doing this for quite a while. Um and they now have a company called Net Play Works. I have to do some research on that, but I'll do another video when I figure that out. Um, then we go back to Tina for a little bit, and she's doing yarn-bombed fishing buoys, which I think is cool because one of the main industries in Iceland is fishing. So that's pretty cool. And then she takes a new spin on thrifted crochet items. I'm going to put a picture in here of what she did. Um, kind of inspired me to maybe do something in my front yard. So more on that to come later. Um, she also had some glass balls that she crocheted on the beach, which were pretty cool. And then she put them in the ocean. So they floated, which is cool. Then we're going to go back to Olak, Olak, and she is showing us her full crochet bodysuits. Picture here. Um, I guess looking at that, I just had some concerns about how practical they were. You go pee pee. Um, she also has an interesting use of sizing up thread patterns, it seems like, that she uses on an installation piece. I'll show a picture here of that because you can clearly see the pineapple crochet pattern or motif and a couple other things. Um, and then we're going to go back to Toshiko, and I mind is blown here because she apparently dies the nylon from a sock blank that sh that's knitted up, which I'm assuming is on a knitting machine. I don't think she's doing that by hand. It looked like it was a knitting machine. And then she dyes it herself with chemical dyes. And then they have all these cool, interesting mechanical apparatuses that ply it and turn it into rope. Which is cool. Right? Um... And then we go back to Tenna, and there's a really cool picture of her using cross stitch or cruel embroidery. A couple pictures here um, and yarn bombing with those. It seems like she's putting some words on top. Um, so it's vintage items. And then we go to the crochet shop of Olek and you see how now it's not where she's living, I don't think, because this is when she's in Australia working with the Ocean Group. But just the realness of it, how there's like things and coffee cups and all that jazz. Um, and then I'll also insert here a picture of her mermaid, that crochet mermaid she did to collaborate with this ocean group. Um, so overall, my feelings about this movie are it's great. You learn a lot of different stuff. Um, like static installations versus ones that are interactive. How movement makes them look different movement interacting with the yarn um use colors or not use colors and how that differently draws the eye um how these different artists came about the art that they do um and yeah it's just nice to get a cross-cultural perspective on a lot of this stuff so i would highly highly recommend watching yarn the movie again if you want to see me and hang out with me watching this movie all the way through um you can hit that join button below and we're doing yarning movies twice a month and we are doing a live every Tuesday at 9 30 a.m eastern standard time but you can always watch the replay so yeah that's yarn the movie um highly suggest uh there is a link down below to get the dvd on amazon it is a great gift for a yarny friend um I will link that down below and it's an affiliate link so thank you for your support um yeah, let me know what other Yarny movies you've seen. Comment down below. Or if you've seen this one, let me know. Okay, everyone. Please like, share, and subscribe so your friends can be affordably crafty too and have a creative day, everyone. Bye-bye.